Welcome! I just did a video on fans in Raspberry Pi where I concluded the best fan that you can get, the one you should get, is this 4-pin Delta fan with PWM and RPM uh, monitoring. But in that video, I feel like I really didn't go into the level of detail I should when I was operating without the fan and the Pi was getting frequency capped but not throttled. Uh, yeah, I said in the video that it's not throttled, so you're probably fine, you don't need a fan because it's not hitting the 85 degrees and, and doing the throttling, but it was hitting 80 Celsius, and that was invoking something called frequency cap. So I wanted to look in and into this in a little more detail and see what frequency capping does. So this is a Raspberry Pi 4. The bottom half of this case is PETG. Um, I'll probably be throwing this PLA half on top in a moment. The 4 is the first one that I feel really does get hot and presents some rather significant thermal issues that you do have to watch out for. Um, and even though in the previous video I said you don't need a fan, it really depends on what you're doing. So right now I am operating this. I am running a benchmark here. This is Sysbench, uh, Test CPU, Computing Primes, and I'm doing three threads. Three threads is consuming uh, almost 300% of the CPU. So the percentages are cumulative. We have four cores, so 400% would be fully utilized. So we're use, utilizing about 300%, about three-fourths of the capability of the Pi is being used. My little Python process that's doing some monitoring is using another 7%. Um, so looking at it here, I, I wrote this Python process to give us some statistics uh, because I wasn't happy with the statistics I was getting out of our Pi monitor daemon. So what I'm doing is I'm sampling uh, the clock and I'm also sampling the get throttled bits and reporting the results here. Uh, I will be presenting a histogram here, which tells for a one second interval what fraction of that interval was at which speed. Right now, 100% of the interval is at 1500 uh, megahertz, 1 1.5 gigahertz. We're sampling uh, these two variables 25 times per second. Um, the average is 1500 megahertz. It's only thing we've got. And the CPU temperature is hovering right below 80 Celsius with that uh, three threads running. And down here I will show the uh, the bitmap of what the uh, hardware says it's doing with throttling and with frequency capping. So nothing really exciting is going to happen until we crank this up to four threads. Well, not four R, four. Um, now if we look over here, we are running at 363%, 364% of the CPU. Um, we are pretty much maxing out this CPU. Load has gone up, and we should start to see the temperature. The temperature is going to start to get above 80. I'm also going to throw this cover on. Just keep things even a little bit warmer in there, trap some heat. So we can see here something starting to happen. Um, the frequency cap bit just got set in the hardware, so frequency capping is occurring. What does that mean? Well, it means for these one second intervals, part of it is running the CPU at a gigahertz instead of 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, and it's dynamically, the Pi is doing that to adjust based on that temperature, how much it figures it has to lower that frequency down to keep it below 85. So right now we're seeing that at 80% of the time, it's running at 1.5 gigahertz and 20, well now up to 24%, 25% of the time it's running at one gigahertz. We can average those together um, over the interval and find out that the average speed we're getting at about 1.3 gigahertz. So we're no longer getting our 1.5 gigahertz of performance. Our Pi is performing less than optimal because of the heat. And if we let this run for a while, we will see that it will continue to get hotter. Okay, so it took a little while, but something interesting has started to happen. Um, we stopped doing 1.5 gigahertz at all, and then we were doing 1 gigahertz for a while. And now, because it's still too hot, it's actually throttling between 1 gigahertz and 750 megahertz. Um, so our effective um, average CPU speed is just under a gigahertz. We've lost about one-third of the Raspberry Pi's performance due to this heat at this point. Um, you'll also notice I did put a piece of tape over the top of the uh, vent holes in the case to just try to prevent less cooling from any, you know, air rushing through there. 
So I do feel like I'm having to try pretty hard to get this severe frequency capping. Even though we're experiencing frequency capping and even though it's severe, lose, losing a third of our performance, we still haven't experienced actual throttling. There's another bit that will get set when throttling occurs. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get out the heat gun and see if I can just heat the thing up and get it over 85 Celsius and see if it will start throttling. You'll notice as hot as that was, we still never managed to deform the PLA. So I got my heat gun here. Let's try heating it up a bit and see what happens. There, now we're above 85. Now look at that. It is throttling. It's going all the way down to 300 megahertz. So that is what it looks like to experience a throttle on the Raspberry Pi. It thinks it's at 87 Celsius. Um, our performance just completely went to hell. We went down to um, 300 megahertz or so. As it uh, cools back down, uh, you'll see it go back up to around a gigahertz. But it's going to take it a while to uh, cool back down. Okay, so let's try out a real-world load and see how it impacts the thermal behavior of the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so I've got my Pi 4. He's in the usual case uh, with, the, with the cover, no fan. And I have an HDMI monitor hooked up now. Um, this is actually running a browser and streaming a 3D printing nerd from uh, YouTube. So this is actually an HDMI monitor. It may look small, but it is really an HDMI monitor. So you're getting full HDMI video on there. So over here in another tab, we are running DD repeatedly to a Samsung Fit a USB 3.0 or 3.1, I'm not sure which, but to a USB thumb drive. Uh, reading and writing from that thumb drive, that's to continuously exercise the USB circuitry in here. Um, we have a mouse plugged into it. We've got a keyboard plugged into it. And in one window, we're running top. And in another window, we're running my utility that is um, sampling the clock and the throttling and reporting statistics. So what we've got here for load, you can see the Chromium browser. There's some load from that. Altogether, what does it amount to? maybe half a core, sometimes maybe a full core, adding up all these processes together, maybe 100%, maybe about a, a core due to running that web browser. DD over here going to the USB is using maybe about 20% of a core, it's mostly IO. My Python program that's sampling the throttling stuff is using maybe 10% of a core. And we're running at 77 degrees Celsius, so Looking here, we're not even we're not even using full CPU speed, so it's automatically degraded down to 600 megahertz at times when there's not enough load. That's not due to thermals. That's just because um, there's not enough load on the system. It's doing that 600 megahertz in there. There's no frequency capping. There's no throttling. Uh, so this, I think, is a real world load. You know, this is at least as much as a desktop user would get, and you know. It's, viewing a web browser, streaming some video, accessing some storage, accessing some network. We're kind of using up a lot of peripherals. I will see if I can throw on uh, some more load. So here, I'm going to repeatedly compile PyGPIOD. So this is going to run GCC, which can tie up about a core in uh, CPU performance. Uh, where is it there? Yeah, there's the C compiler using up about a core. It's going to use up some RAM. It's going to use up some storage. Um, and there, so now we're finally starting to get into that 80 Celsius range. We did it by using the web browser, using the USB, and compiling something all at the same time. And we are certainly, we're frequency capped now. It is having to pull this down to a gigahertz about 40% of the time. So here we've reached the point where it is uh, frequency capping at one gigahertz almost 100% of the time. Everything is still working. We're still playing 3D printing nerd. Um, we are still writing and reading from the uh, USB flash drive. And over here we are still compiling PyGPIOD over and over again. And we've lost a, a third of our frequency. So in this case, if you really wanted this Pi to serve as a general purpose computer and you expected to be doing this level of work, which I think is not an unreasonable amount of work, I do tend to multitask, so 
real world scenario, I could be compiling something while I'm watching a YouTube video and copying some files from a USB drive. Uh, I think you would want to run a fan. Now let's see what happens if we add even more load to it. Let's run uh, the CPU benchmark and let's actually give it four threads. So now in addition to all that other stuff, I've also added uh, CPU benchmark, four threads, computing prime numbers. What's going to happen? Look at that. Now we have finally caused throttling to occur. Um, it's brought the CPU all the way down to 600 megahertz. So that's uh, that's that's pretty significant. Now let's just because I'm going to try putting a fan on and see what happens. Okay, so the Pi is certainly very hot. Throttling and frequency cap are happening. We are still playing 3D printing nerd. We are still copying things to the USB flash drive. We are still rebuilding Pi GPIOD. We are still running four threads of CPU load. But we are ready to turn on this fan that I have attached. If you watched the previous video, I told how to PWM this fan and how to read back the RPM. Let's turn the fan on. I'm running it at about 2000 RPM, which is nice and quiet. Let's see what happens to our CPU temperature. Okay, the throttling has disengaged. The temperature is starting to come down. I'm going to try bringing up the fan a little bit more. So here we are at 2600 RPM. Oh, we'll do more than that. There we are at 3600 RPM. Fan is still nice and quiet. And I think we're going to get to below 80 degrees. Yep, the frequency cap is stopped. Uh, so there we have it. Even a fan operating at a very conservative 3500 RPM, nice and quiet, is enough to get that CPU down into the 76 Celsius range where there is absolutely no throttling and no frequency capping. I think if we crank this fan up to full, there, it's very noisy now, but it's running at about 9,500 RPM. I think we will see this temperature plummet to around 50 or so. So I think at this point we can draw a conclusion about whether or not you need a fan for your Raspberry Pi. And the conclusion is it really depends on your load. For simple watching YouTube on a desktop or web browsing, I think it'll work fine without the fan. If you want to do that, but you want to throw in compiling something in the background or copying some files to and from a USB flash drive, I think you'll want a fan. If you just want to get crazy with it and start throwing CPU load on top of watching a YouTube video, copying files off the USB drive, and compiling of programs in the background, then you absolutely will want a fan or you're going to be throttling your CPU down to 600 megahertz. So I hope you found this video interesting. I certainly found it quite the project to really get to the bottom of this CPU throttling and frequency capping behavior. I'm glad I took the time to make up a second video because I really didn't feel like I nailed it on the first video. Uh, just understanding how that frequency cap behavior worked and uh, clearly conveying it. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.